Hey everybody, my name is Emily Steffen and I am super excited to share an hour full of crafting and creativity and making conversation because that's what we all are. And I really want this time to be full of inspiration and ideas and I wanna talk with each other through the chat box that we have and just really get kind of our creativity goals and inspiration kind of amped up for the spring and summer season. So. I'm the kind of crafter that sometimes I paint, sometimes I sew, sometimes I'm drawing, sometimes I'm doing God knows what with paper mache or all these other things. And I love that, but sometimes that gets me in this like, oh my word, I can't focus <laughs> a moment. So if you're anything like me, you're in good company, <laughs> which is really good. Um, and today we have a download available for you. We have a chat box that I hope we can just converse and have a good time together as we're talking about our creativity and kind of getting it jump started and getting some craft inspiration today. So the PDF that I'm going to refer to looks like this and it is available in the description. So I want you just to kind of download that or get some ideas and maybe you want to print it off super quickly as we're doing the intro here so that you can jot down some, I don't know, notes or some, some things that come up. Um, and I also want to point out that if you do have questions or if you do want to comment, we do have the chat box feature, which I hope is super active. I hope you chime in with where you're coming from and what you love to do, what your main craft is, maybe your main, I don't know, hiccup with creativity, because I'd love to kind of just talk about all that and just have this kind of be a virtual hangout <laughs> of sorts for us today. So um, a long time ago, a long time ago, in January, a long time ago, that was not long ago, um, I did a little kind of moment where we talked about crafting goals. And I really want to just kind of like bring that back up. And maybe you were not a part of it, maybe you didn't see that, that's totally okay, I don't want you to feel left out. But I think sometimes we often kind of kick in the new year in January and we get super excited about goals and then it's March. <laughs> and it's like, oh my gosh, what the heck, I've kind of fallen off the bandwagon or I've lost sight of what my goals are. So the first thing I kind of want you to do is just sit back and take a moment to go, oh my word, did I even make any crafting goals? Maybe I'm, I'm personally not like the best goal setter because I always have like 300 million goals because as I said, I like to do a lot of different buckets of, um, use a lot of different buckets of materials and a lot of different kind of avenues and techniques. And so I'm not the best goal, goal setter because I tend to have really a lot of goals, <laughs> which any good goal setter will say that's not good because they're not going to be attainable. <laughs> that's okay. So um, what I want you to think about as we kind of just start off this hour together is I want you to think about if you had any goals that you kind of talked about in January, if you set them out and said, this is, I'm going to do this amazing project, or I'm going to try this material or whatever it is, or I want to finish something I started, or I want to tackle something I've always had on my Pinterest board list, or I really want to do this one creative thing with my friend. Um, I want that to just kind of be at the forefront of your mind as we're kind of talking through a lot of these things. A lot of us, oh my word, I love that people are already chiming in. This is great. Um, Deb says she's here to search for inspiration because she's feeling stuck when it comes to crafting. She loves to sew and quilt and she wants to reconnect with her craft. I feel like so many of us can raise our hands right now and say, yep, it's March and we're feeling in the doldrums. <laughs> it's kind of still winter-ish and it's the doldrums of winter, let's be honest. The holidays have come and gone and now we're kind of amping up towards spring and summer. So I'm so glad you're here, Deb. I want to give you that inspiration and kind of hopefully you leave this hour feeling excited and inspired maybe to pick up your sewing machine again and some fabric, or maybe it's totally something different. Um, we have a lot of people from Minneapolis and, oh my gosh, oh, Qatar. Good evening from Qatar. I think I'm saying that right, Christy. If I'm not, you can correct me. Okay, but as I said, I want us to think about the goals. So if you are a business crafter, think right now in your brain, what is the biggest business goal for my craft or my creativity or my maker space? What is the biggest business goal that I set out for myself? Sorry, take a drink of water. Um, and I want you to think about if the hiccups are the same that you've had at the beginning of the year, or if you feel like you've been able to jump in and had like massive success with what you've set out. Um, and I want to, I guess I maybe should say this as a caveat. I don't feel like we have to be crushing our goals 100% of our lifetime because that's just super unrealistic. <laughs> I feel like 
so much of making and crafting and creativity is actually space. I always remind myself that giving myself space is actually the best thing sometimes I can do for myself. So if you're feeling like, oh my gosh, Emily, I did set out these for these amazing goals in January and none of them have happened, totally fine. Because sometimes I do believe that we put our intentions or our goals on paper or in our brains or on a mood board or on a Pinterest board or something. And simply we kind of realize like, actually just kidding, this isn't anything I really wanted to do, or this is something that's super unattainable, or this is something that I actually don't have as much passion for as I thought. So don't feel like by me bringing this up, my caveat is you don't have to be crushing your life at all times because that is, that is just unrealistic. And I want, I want you to feel like you can give yourself space and grace to just have moments to check in and have moments to go, yep, that's not for me anymore. Or yep, this is totally for me and I haven't got it out of my brain in three months. So um, one thing I wanna use the chat box for and related to this business goals is if you have business goals or you have business hiccups, please jot them down in the comments because I totally believe in the power of community. And oftentimes when I'm talking here and you're kind of ch chatting and we're kind of talking together and have this virtual community thing happening, it is so cool because actual problems can be solved or actual ideas can start flowing. So don't be afraid to jot those down and just kind of say, hey, oh my gosh, I'm struggling with marketing or I'm really struggling with even what to do or how to source materials or I'm just stuck creatively. Just jot those down because I really wanna be able to communi communitively help. Um, Another thing that I feel like we talked about in January that I really, really am humongous on is personal making. So, and maybe this will help um, Deb when you were saying you feel kind of stuck. One of the things that I challenge myself in, and if you do the same, I'd love to hear what you do. I gravitate towards paint, drawing, fabric, paper, and like um, tactile things like felt or clay or things like that. I am not the best at like, uh, sculpting something like yes that paper mache sometimes because it's something but that it doesn't it doesn't come to my brain so what I often give myself a goal personally is nothing to do with anything that I will ever teach or show or probably see the light of day but it's I, I constantly tell myself think of contrast and think of difference so a personal goal of mine this year was my daughter had um, she was given actually it was my old wooden plain wooden dollhouse that my grandpa had made that was in storage and it kind of got resurrected out of storage i had forgotten about it and i thought oh does my daughter want this she's kind of on the verge of not playing with dolls anymore and i showed it to her and esther my daughter was like oh my word this is so cool so what we've been doing super slowly <laughs> is kind of like refurbishing it we've been painting it a little bit and i don't work with wood that much at all and this is not like actual woodworking with like a saw or a saw or anything but it's been super cool for me to go, okay, this is what I normally use and I'm gonna completely shift my focus. And quite frankly, I'm just gonna be so honest, some of the things we've done have not turned out as what I thought would be in my brain <laughs> because I'm not used to those materials. I've never worked with them before. And quite frankly, I, why would I be an expert in them? I've never picked up the little like balsa wood, you know, flooring thing that you put in the dollhouse. And I think for me, I like giving myself personal making goals that allow me the space to kind of fail or to learn something new because in the process of me using the that it was like a balsa wood fake wood floor thing that's for dollhouses it's like really thin wood um i sort of like something clicked in my brain this is so weird but the way that you snapped the floor it clicked in my brain of how i can make this a problem I was having with this one, um, with this acrylic material that I was trying to make something else with for a project that was at Christmas time that I couldn't solve. So I stuck it to the side to make these like really cool luminaries. And I wasn't getting the right sides of the way that, whatever, <laughs> this is probably not making sense. But all that to say is it was a material I wasn't using or used to working with. And it totally like, there was a moment of, oh, I should try that. And so I brought out the materials again it still didn't work. <laughs> what, what I thought would work still didn't work because the acrylic was too um, hefty or thick, but it's now I'm on another rabbit trail of how to solve the problem. So all that to say, personal goals for me are humongous because for me, I look at personal goals as personal making or personal challenges with room to almost fail. And maybe that sounds really silly, but I, I um, want to encourage you if you feel stuck, 
or if you feel in a creative rut, do the complete opposite. The word contrast is huge in art. And um, if you, all the time when you're looking at something, you know it has great contrast when you can squint and you can see the lights and the darks. So consider, see, consider doing something completely opposite of what you normally do that might pull you out of the rut. Drawing or doodling are huge, and you might think I'm a horrible drawer, but that fine muscle memory in your hands will translate so well to the little tiny cutting and quilting or the crafting with the paper, the paper crafting little moments. So just, a, just I'm just gonna put that out there. Maybe somebody else has a really cool uh, story you could share about how you're using a different material. One material that I have not used a lot since college is actually clay, like fire clay, like uh, kiln fire clay. Like I constantly am making little female clay sculptures with my kids or my daughter, which is like polymer clay you can throw in the oven and they're like miniatures often, but I haven't worked a lot with clay since college. And I know there are studios around where you can rent kiln space. So that's something that's been a little bit on my brain that I would love to dabble in a little bit. Um, wow, we have a lot of people. This is so cool. Oh my gosh, I love this. I love when everybody's saying where they're from. And there's someone from France. And I don't speak French, but I love what you wrote because <laughs> it looks really pretty. Um, okay, so uh, the next sort of thing um, I want to talk about is with just like hopefully this gives you some craft inspiration is the idea of like shifting crafting habits. So, and maybe this will give you a little bit of an insight into me and maybe you're the same or maybe you're the opposite, but I am um, not always the greatest in the afternoon slump of life. <laughs> I don't know if you're the same. Maybe it's because my like coffee intake needs to be higher in the afternoon, I'm not sure, but for me, something I started realizing is I get a lot accomplished in the morning, whether it be laundry or dishes or getting my kids lunches made or starting a really cool crafting project that I've really wanted to or making a lot of headway on a project I'm working on or writing a ton of emails that I've been putting off. My morning is my most productive hours. So at the beginning of the year, I thought, heck, I'm gonna start kind of shifting, trying to shift my day around as best as I can and make crafting happen in the morning. Well, that's a super good idea, except all of my other adulting tasks went to the wayside, <laughs> ah, which is kind of a problem <laughs> And when you're an adult because you have to do the things that are required of you to remain being an adult. So I'm realizing three months in, okay, that's a super great idea if I didn't have any responsibilities in life. However, I feel like the, the new sort of rhythm or shift, even just in the past couple weeks that I've been adopting is this. I'll get everything I need to get done that's super important in the morning, have lunch, take a walk, do what I need to, because I love just kind of breaking up my day. And in the afternoon, if I can kind of just like give myself an amp up, enter my studio space and get in there, I actually, it's like I have this second wind crafting that I don't have when I'm doing other responsibilities that I don't want to do. <laughs> I'm very motivated by fun. That is something that my friends and family know about me. So crafting and making is fun for me. Answering emails and doing the dishes is not fun. So for me to put that off in the afternoon, it never happens. So I'm kind of seeing the shift in my energy and my desire to create. And even though it was easier in the morning, it's not the most productive for my life. So I'm kind of pushing it to the afternoon. And I'm actually finding that it's really working. So, um, and let me just say, it's not every single day. It's the days that I find that I can um, have an afternoon carved out for that or something. So don't, don't hear me say that, <laughs> that to be successful, you have to have this or you have to have that. Absolutely not. Whatever works for your schedule and whatever kind of shift you're seeing and how your making schedule is going to be. Um, one thing I think is so important with making is that I think um, whatever craft you're into or whatever materials you use, whatever um, you're trying to master, making time for it is huge. And that's kind of where I guess the heart of that question was. Because oftentimes I think we can have a to-do list a mile long or dreams a mile long or inspiration a mile long. And it gets really hard if we don't actually like carve the time out to do it. So um, part of the reason why I had seen, okay, I wanna make time in my morning or my afternoon is I wanted to make time in my morning or my afternoon. So maybe for you, if you work a full-time job and you're like, oh my gosh, that feels really daunting. When I come home from my nine to five job, I have no energy at night. 
don't feel shame for that. Please then just say, okay, then every Sunday from 9 a.m. to noon, I'm gonna dedicate myself to calling a friend and chatting about our craft or going out for coffee or working on my craft. I don't know, whatever that means, or maybe it's every Saturday night, you pour yourself a glass of wine and you sit down at your sewing machine. Or I don't know, maybe that's a bad idea because maybe your seams won't be straight. I'm not sure, but I do feel like as long as you're making time for it, that's what is gonna be the most important part because we, I am a dreamer and I sometimes get so many ideas on my list. As I said, my goals can be 300 miles long that if I don't make time for it, it never happens. Or famous last words, and I know I'm not alone in this, you buy the materials for a project and then it sits in your sewing room or your crafting room or your making space or your studio. So <laughs> just finding a time to carve out, that was kind of the heart behind, for me, what the kind of habit shift that I um, was desiring for, for making. Um, oh, Agatha, you have a super good question from New Orleans and, and uh, give more specifics if, if you need to, but she's asking where can she source fabric with her designs? I do know there's a handful of companies online now, I think there only used to be one or two, but there's a handful of companies online where you can upload your designs and print one yard, two yards. Um, I think it depends on the fabric type you want. If it's like silk, I believe there's a minimum. This is how the last I looked into it, which maybe somebody can chime in and give a little bit more specifics. Um, but if it's, if it's just cotton or if it has a lot of color or not a lot of color, surface design and fabric design and pattern design have been always fascinating to me. And every night um, for me to decompress, it's just something that I do. I sit down with my iPad and I have an app on my iPad and I just doodle. And half the time those doodles never see the light of day because they're just like, what's in my brain or what I'm seeing in front of me, a plant or a, my kids or whatever. Um, I don't necessarily have goals for that. I just sit down and kind of like visually, it's kind of how I unload with my day. And there has been moments during that process where I'm going, it would be super cool if someday I could see my designs on fabric. So I love that you're pursuing that because there is a huge market, I think, for amazing, beautifully colored, super cool designs. So I don't, um, if anybody has specifics on that, please chime in in the chat because I love, I would love to help actually solve that problem for you. And maybe this is a follow-up question. Are you hoping to sell that, sell, sell your fabric or are you hoping just to have it to make a shirt or a tote bag or something? Um, Cause I do know that there's like lines of like collections of fabric that, that are, um, many people design and I know that that would maybe I don't know if you would need an agent to get in contact with various companies or various people that print things I'm not sure about all that have no idea seems really like a cool avenue <laughs> I'm cheering you on <laughs> I guess that's what I have to say um I love that okay the next little box here is just for you to kind of like brain dump some new ideas because maybe in the process of thinking about your goals your business goals your successes your personal making goals, um, shifting habits. Maybe you're like, yep, nope, I just need to kind of brain dump some new ideas. And that's kind of what this little kind of last box down here is for. And maybe the box translates to the back of the paper or more into a sketchbook that's an even longer list of things or just we want to get all your ideas out. Um, I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to brain dump and get everything out on paper. One thing I feel like I hear from people all the time, and this is kind of what I want to focus the majority of our time on, is creative prompts and starters for when you're in a slump. <laughs> and some of this you may go, this is totally not for me, and that is 100% okay. And some of it you may think, oh my gosh, this is a super cool idea, I love it, this is great. So I have a list on, on the PDF, which is again downloadable in the, in the description in the link, and um, or you can just jot down the notes that you hear today. But I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and six written down, and I promise you there's like way more in my brain. But these six are the ones that I feel like um, can be super fun and kind of trans, not, I wanna, I wanna say transformational for your, um, for your craft, but maybe for the way that you think or the, or the thought process or the creativity that you have. Um, so the first one is pick a color that you normally avoid and use it in excess. I am just gonna be the first person to tell you that I never do this one, even though it's always been on my list because 
color is one of my most favorite things in the entire world. Like color is what makes me, it's one of the things that makes me the most happy. <laughs> I love, we have so many murals and colorful moments in our house and um, one color you will never see me wear usually. I'm making sure I don't have it on because I don't even think I own anything. And one color I never use is red, like red, red. For whatever reason, I don't gravitate towards it. I don't even own a kitchen spatula in the color red. I don't know. I never even pull out the color red in a marker, a crayon, unless it's like something to help my kids with their schoolwork or something. So I totally never do this one because I'm lame <laughs> and I just never do it. But the, but the prompt is there for the reason of this. And maybe you don't want to make an entire red themed quilt. Fine, 100% fine. But the idea here is that I think sometimes when we're stuck and when we don't have, um, when we're feeling like we're in the rut or in the doldrums of making, um, and I do this too, we gravitate towards the same thing over and over and over again, right? Like the same color pink, the same color yellow, this is literally me, the same color green, the same color blue, all those things. Um, I think sometimes then it leads to the same next color or the same next color or the same next color. And it's super cool to have a color story that's really prominent in your life, but to switch up that creativity and start seeing things differently and give you that contrast shift, try something in another color. Paint a whole painting with the co various colors of green. I don't know, make a thank you card for your neighbor in all the colors of pink because you never use pink. So the point of this is not to like make an entire quilt or this huge amazing painting that you think is gonna sell for millions of dollars. The idea is just to like shift your thoughts, shift your focus and go, I never use this color, let me explore it. Mix it with reds or mix, mix your red with a little bit of white to get it a little pinky. Mix it with a little bit of purple to make it a little bit more purple of a red. Um, whenever you're working with color, I'm just gonna give you my two second caveat. Colors talk best to each other when they're next to each other on the color wheel. So if you're struggling with color, Google da, 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 the color wheel. And the way that I describe it to kids is you're friendliest with the colors that are next to it. So if you have a very simple co color wheel that just has Roy G. Biv on it, red is friendly with orange, right? Because it's next to each other on the color wheel. Red is also friendly with purple. Red is also friendly. This is the complementary color with the color across from it. Those are the opposites. But if you want to just have a fail-proof way, reds talk to each other and they're friendliest, um, excuse me, colors talk to each other and are friendliest with the colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So if you pick orange, you can mix orange with a little bit of yellows. You can mix orange with a little bit of reds, th those in-between colors. So like the red, orange, or the red, the yellow, orange, those are called tertiary colors. And because those are next to each other, they also talk well together. And those kind of make up little color families. I could go on and on about color, <laughs> like I told you. But so pick a section or a color that you don't normally use and run with it. Do something fun with it. Um, okay, um, Tina, great idea to get unstuck. I think I've, I've been thinking of doing that. I should just go ahead and do it. Isn't that always the the thing, Tina, just to do it, just start someplace. That's, I think, starting is the hardest part sometimes, at least for me. <laughs> um, okay, so this next um, one on the list, repurpose, repurpose some trash or junk. I have a story about this. I recently made some pencils, and I think we have a photo, out of um, shipping tubes. And I made them for this space that I teach kids in sometimes. And I'd wanted to make some sort of big moment in the space and hang them. And they are kind of hanging from the ceiling right now in that space. And I wanted to just make them huge. And I thought, OK, what's a really fun thing for kids? Crayons, fun. OK, how can I make crayons big? If, you, if, you've, if you've been following me for a while or if you've seen any other Craftsy tutorials, I've made giant colored pencils and giant pencils out of pool noodles which are really cool, but I wanted to make something a little bit more substantial and bigger. So, you know those long shipping tubes? They're like big, I don't know, you, probably people roll up blueprints or something and send them. Well, the bulk of the crayon is made out of those shipping tubes. And the top of the crayon is, if you go into, um, I had a couple of these in my studio space and then I found a few more. Um, yarn or thread is woven or can sometimes be woven onto these triangle, um, cones kind of and it's how if you were to use a serger to sew there's like four or five of them but it would be like these are industrial sizes they're really big and they're like that craft cardboard paper 
So I glued those together. And at first I spray painted them. I didn't like the spray paint because it was weird and shiny. So then I just painted them with, with acrylic paint. And then I added the black little top and bottom. And then I had the students have a little competition on what to name the, the colors of the crayons. And they were very creative and blew my mind because I think kids are the most creative sometimes in the world. And um, it was fun. And it was just one of those things where I never, I don't even, like if I were to make those, like for my space, I'm not even sure what I would do with them. But it was really cool because now they're hanging in the art space where these kids are learning about art every week. And it was out of junk. It was literally because I got shipped too many um, tubes for this project I was doing. I got shipped two boxes instead of one. And the project was done that I needed them for. And I thought, what the heck am I going to do with these? And I felt really bad recycling them or burning them or throwing them away. So they became crayons. <laughs> so the thought with that is... Um, before you throw anything away, and maybe you're going to say, oh my word, this is going to make me a pack rat. <laughs> it's okay. Before you throw anything away, maybe just give it a second thought. Or if you're home with your kids for spring break right now, or if you need something to do on a rainy day, grab some trash from the recycling and make it into something. Always, always, and forever, you can always sculpt out of all of your kids' extra homework. <laughs> Every time I've paper mache I've saved my kids' homework and the millions of papers that they come home with, they're both in elementary school, so the millions of papers that they come home with, and that becomes our, our paper mache paper. So you can always ball that up to make uh, an elephant or a penguin or whatever it is, but just get your ideas turning and your wheels turning for that. Um, okay, this one, um, I'm going to skip one right now and get back to it. Uh, continuous line drawings. Has anybody ever made continuous line drawings? Because they're so fun. And I'm, I'm actually just gonna do one really fast because I feel like I wanna show you what these are. And you can Google it and you can say, oh my gosh, this, this might be a little bit better than what you're showing us, but I really want you just to see. Continuous line drawings means you're not picking up your pencil and um, you are looking at something and you're not picking up your pencil. Uh, it's contour line drawing, continuous line drawing, that's another word for it. You can do blind line drawings, which means that you're not looking at what you're doing. The idea here is to, sh to, to connect your brain and your hand to see all the little tiny moments that you see on your paper. And you may say to me, Emily, I'm a quilter. Why would I, get, why would I do continuous line drawings? Maybe you get out your quilt and you hang it on the wall and you do a continuous line drawing of your quilt and maybe you make this beautiful masterpiece that you can turn into little cards that you send with your quilts when you send them to people that you love. I don't know, but it's just to get your ideas flowing. The cool thing about line drawings is that it helps you see. It helps you see the things that you never saw before. So for instance, this is going to be like a two second line drawing and you may laugh at me, but that's okay. Um, when you hold your hand out, right, I'm just going to use my hand and this paper is right here. Like all you're going to do is I'm going to follow every tiny little nook and cranny of my hand without picking up my pencil. And I'm going to do my knuckle and then up here and I'm probably going really fast. And I'm not looking at my paper because I'm choosing to do it blind. But when I, when you look at your hand, I'm just going to do my pointer finger and my thumb just to prove my point here. There's all these little tiny creases and crevices and I probably need to put lotion on my hands because they're kind of dry but all these things <clears throat> and this doesn't even look like a hand kind of it's this that is this <laughs> this is this right here the point is is that it shows you how to see a little bit it shows you to slow down and look it shows you to see the details in the creases of my hand my, my fingers not that large but all the knuckles, all the creases, the shape of the point, the thumbnail, the little tiny creases, these are the crevices, the knuckles. It's all it does. It's a silly little way, but it gets you outside of your head and it gets you to see a little bit more clear. That's all a continuous line drawing is. It's actually kind of fun. Um, and I would maybe encourage you, if you're looking for like, oh my word, I need a marketing material or I need to make a little, I don't know, social media post about something that isn't what I'm doing, but is what I'm doing. I don't know, put up a quilt and do a little line drawing of the quilt or of your paintbrush and markers and pencils or I don't know, sewing machine. It could be a really cool little d d d doodle that you end up with. Um, oh, Tina says continuous line drawing makes her think of free motion quilting. Yes, that's exactly what it is. I, um, one of the things that kind of going back to before that I honed in on a little bit when I 
was kind of shifting myself as I have my sewing machine and I sew often, but I was given this foot, which is kind of the thing that goes on your sewing machine that, I don't know, it, it, it's the foot. It's the thing that like pushes down onto your fabric. And somebody gave me a foot and it was called a couching foot. Never heard of it before in my life. And I put it on my machine and I Googled a little bit of it and I was like, okay, I see that people are using this for free motion, which means that you're, you're able to move your fabric around and it's not kind of being pulled or pushed by the machine, you are controlling it. And I thought, haha, light bulb moment, I can use that foot to draw on fabric. So a moment that somebody, I was kind of pushing myself out of my box and I've been obsessed with it. So similar idea where I've been able to draw little floral things. I drew this really cool big smiley face thing on the back of a jacket that my daughter had out of yarn and it's been really fun and it's inspired me in other ways. It's not like the most amazing thing in the world and it's not going to bring me millions of dollars, but it sure is fun and it makes me happy. Um, okay, the last couple things on here for these prompts. And I really, really want you to jump in if you have other prompts or creative rut moments that really help you get out of things, like please jot them down in the comments because I love to hear them, is um, make a collage or a mood board or a Pinterest board and pick a theme. Maybe your theme is going to be dogs running through fields. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe your theme is going to be the color yellow. Maybe your theme is going to be purple fruit. I Whatever it is. Pick a theme, and again, the intention of this isn't so that you land with this million dollar beautiful collage that you can sell for a zillion dollars. The idea is to just like get your brain working in other facets and get yourself out of your head and just have fun with it. Um, and another thing that I'm really inspired by song a lot, like I love music. I feel like different moods give me different whatever, right? We all probably feel that. We all have probably various things we listen to. Try creating something inspired by your favorite song. Maybe it is just, uh, maybe you're just like doodling as you're listening to something. Maybe you take the title of your favorite song and you write down every single word that makes you think of the title of your song, like everything that's correlated. Or maybe you take the chorus of the song and you hand letter it onto a card to a friend. Something that is not what you normally do to get you outside of what you're doing. The one thing that continuously is a mood lifter for me when I'm in a creative rut is literally going outside. <laughs> it sounds really lame <laughs> and really easy. But for me, if I, I did this just yesterday, I'm making these giant paper flowers for this big thing for Easter and I was stuck. In my brain, it was not working and I was like, ah, this is gonna drive me nuts. I thought it would work the way that I was thinking in my head and I just got outside I walked away from it for 20 or 30 minutes and I came back and I had no new inspiration. I had no new solutions. I just needed to get out of my studio, go for a walk with my dog, jump on the trampoline with my kids for a few minutes. And I came back and my inspiration was not there and I still walked away from it again <laughs> because I think walking away and giving yourself space in the middle of a project is one thing. And then finding these sort of creative prompts and starters is like both of those together, if you can kind of balance your making with those two things, I think you're singing the glorious songs because you're able to just do the things that are so fun that make you happy, that got you into crafting and making in the first place. So I do see that it sounds like we together solved Agatha's problem or her solution for um, her uh, fabric, which is amazing. I love that. I love that we're, yep, continuous line drawings are like free motion quilts. Um, overcoming, oh, Olivia, this is good. I'm struggling with overcoming feelings of self-doubt and perfectionism that definitely hinders my creative process. Oh, my stars. I think any single maker or creative person, if we were being honest with ourselves, that whole like imposter syndrome or that whole, I'm not good at this, is like the talking head that's constantly on your shoulder. And... I can't give you like this the most amazing inspiration as to the fact that we've all overcome it other than I think we all struggle with it, right? And I think especially with social media and especially with how the everything is pretty instant, we can go online and find something that somebody else is doing that's similar to what we're doing and give ourselves the unpep talk and say, oh, it's not worth it or oh, I shouldn't do that or oh, ugh, 
mm, this is frustrating or, oh, I can't start my business or, oh, that isn't, that isn't what I should do or, oh, I should do something else and get that like spiral of in our brains. And um, I guess maybe the solution is don't go on social media. <laughs> Not that that's what you did. Maybe that's the solution to that particular problem, but it is real. I think it's real for all of us and it sucks <laughs> to be quite honest when you feel like that because it just takes away every wind in your sail. And um, I remember one of my art professors in college used to say that art was not created in a vacuum, meaning it's a part of a bigger conversation outside of what you're just doing. But I think it's worthwhile sometimes just to go Ooh, and focus in on what you're, what you're doing to give yourself the um, chutzpah or the excitement to finish what you've started or just to get started. Um, yeah, it's hard. It's so hard. I, that self-doubt is real. And it's hard just to say, I'm going to try it. And you know what's even harder? I just gave my kid this little moment of a pep talk as a mom moment. So maybe you'll say, oh my word, I know. Is being really bad at something. It's hard to be bad at something when you're first starting. It's just a bummer. <laughs> but the bravery it takes to be bad at something, to keep going, to be better at something is really cool. And that's when like I think beauty and creativity is like at its fullest and flourishes the most. But it's really hard. Not that you are being bad at something, Olivia, because I f I'm sure you're incredible at your craft, but it's hard to be bad at something. And I, I we all struggle with that. So, yeah, sorry. I, we're, we're right there with you, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, okay, Ella, I just take a piece of paper and mix watercolor paints in all, all colors and I like listening to, yes. Okay, one of the things um, that I have really been finding, and this is not on here, I guess maybe it kind of is, is blob painting. I don't know, I should have, I should maybe have pulled up some images of that, but blob painting is so cool. And I, maybe, Ella, this is what you're talking about, where you have a piece of paper and you just make blobs on the paper, right? Or, or swirls or lines, and then you turn it into something. I guess a little bit of that's what I'm gonna demo in a little bit, but blob painting's a little different where like, you just go, it feels more free, it feels more just like, like you said, you just listen to your music and put on songs and you just, you just paint. And the freedom of that is really, really cool. So, okay, speaking of that, this is a great segue. Thank you, Ella, great segue. Um, one of the things that I have done um, with my kids that is so cool, and I know this is a little bit of like a quick kind of trendy craft, but it's so fun, is us, I, I, I'm gonna call it smear painting, right? Like this, the little smear, smear art. And I wanna show you how I do it. I wanna show you that it's super fast. You can use scraps of paper. You can use whatever you have. You could use newspaper, literally any flat surface, any paint you want, and you can turn it into something great. So um, I have these old, I don't know, they're gift cards that have been used by my kids that I saved. I have a bunch of random paints. I have, this is Dazzling Glitter Dimensional Fabric Paint. This stuff works actually really well. I also have these acrylic paints in very metallic shades. And I also have, I don't even know what this is. These, this is orange creamsicle, flamingo, fun in the sun and ocean breeze. When I grow up, I really wanna be a color namer. Just side note. So this is so simple and the creativity is kind of endless with it and your kids will have a whole heap of a blast with it, I promise you. So I'm gonna do this bigger paper first. All I'm gonna do is grab some colors here. And again, maybe pick colors that talk to each other on the color wheel, maybe pick colors that don't talk to each other. I don't know. You can be really fancy and put your paint into other tubes or you can, you can use a palette knife and put it on your paper. I'm not doing that. I'm just gonna go quick and do some blobs that don't really have a rhyme or reason. I'm going from the top of my paper down because I will scrape it down. And the cool thing about this project is, to me, it's mindless, which I really love, because again, it gets you out of your brain, and it can be turned into something really practical. I've done this with my kids a handful of times, and my daughter is kind of over it now, <laughs> just because we've done it so many times. But even this um, winter, around Christmas time, we did these in some Christmas colors on paper, and we turned the paper into gift tags. So that's what I mean by something that's purposeful. And I'm just doing like really little blobs on here. You can figure out a pattern of how you wanna do this. I just did blobs at the top of the paper and all you're gonna do is take your credit card 
or your gift card or a piece of cardboard or uh, something that you can either throw away or wipe off and reuse is just do scrape it right on down. Ta-da! Seems so simple, but here's what I love about it. I'm gonna grab a paper towel and wipe this off. Here's what I love about it. This is something that you can do, like I said, with newspaper, cardstock, drawing paper, watercolor paper, lined paper, your kid's notebook paper, the back of your kid's homework, I don't know, <laughs> whatever. And you can turn it into something that you something that's usable, but something that um, pushes you outside of what you've normally done. So for th I just want to show you a few examples of what I mean by that. This was a little blob drawing that my daughter did, and I drew some flowers right on top of it, and it is a little card. It is not the most amazing piece of artwork, but you know what? It was a really fun little afternoon with her. This got turned into, I don't know if you can see, I doodled little people's heads on the top of the um, blobs. Now my thought was I could turn it into a card, but we I did it upside down, so I don't really know what we're going to do with this. And I even thought I could draw, you know, like the little bodies or they could be playing on a playground or something, but I just took a, not even a real drawing pen and doodled faces right on top. This was a long piece of paper that was left over from something and we pulled down the um, paint and it became a little thank you card. So the cool thing about this project is this. You're able to combine sort of the idea of doing blob painting, combine the idea of getting outside of your head and kind of just releasing the expectation and giving yourself creative space. Um, I have in the past with some of my daughters, ones that she's made that are really colorful or she's really thought out the intention behind them. You could put these in a frame. You could make these into gift tags. You can, I don't know, put, make them into little encouraging, encouraging notes for your kid's lunchbox or your best friends, like put them on the mirror in your roommate's bathroom. I don't know, whatever this is. But the whole idea um, is to get out of your own head and to do something really fun. So with that, one of the other prompts on here, whoops, I'm going to go back to this right here. One of the other prompts on here is to um, draw a random shape or a scribble or a line drawing and turn it into something. So this is kind of the practice of that in a way. So this is kind of a random shape that we have happening here. And I'm, I'm gonna move some of this stuff out of the way. And let's turn, whoops, this, here we go, here we go. I don't have my scissors, so I'm using this today. Uh, we're gonna turn this into just a little kind of scribble drawing. Ah, here. So I'm going to cut it down just for the sake of not having both of these, right? Has anybody ever done this before? I want to hear if you have because this is a really, um, oh, by the way, I used acrylic paints. You can use temper paints. You can use, watercolor is probably about the only thing that I don't think it would work with because watercolor would just go everywhere, I would imagine. Uh, this is fabric paint, some of it's, this is fabric paint, this one's fabric paint. So it's, it's like um, tacky kind of, but it works, totally works. So, okay, let's make this a card. And it can open up sideways. Ooh, it kind of looks like a sunset, doesn't it? It kind of looks like a landscape. We're going to make it into a landscape. So that's not what I thought I was going to do, but that's what we're going to do now. We're going to, here's our horizon line. This marker is not working so well. I'm just demoing this to show you that, hey, you can do some really fun, beautiful things <clears throat> that don't have to be overly thought out. And here, we're going to do like a silhouette of a palm tree. Let's see if I can draw a palm tree. Never in my life do I draw palm trees. Hey, <laughs> that's palm tree-esque, right? There we go. Something along those lines, right, where you have this cute little 
and you are beautiful, I love you, you're the best friend a girl could ever ask for right in the middle, right? But something this simple that is so easy and feels like not normal, not something that you would gravitate towards, this is what I feel like I, I want you to think about. So we've talked a lot about our, about our goals, We've talked a lot about our um, habit shifts. Maybe you've jotted down a ton of your new ideas. Um, and I think the, the idea here is just to go. <laughs> just to think through what you've thought you were gonna plan out for the year, right? Like in January, it's now March. And think through those things. Think through the, the business, maybe if you're a business maker, all those hiccups or all those things that you've loved or gotten excited about and get out of your own way and give yourself space. Space to create, space to remake an old art piece, space to scribble on a piece of paper or do some of these sort of, um, I don't know, blob drawings. I love that. I see that, um, Tina, you're saying that sounds so much like the artist way. I want to read this. Christy says, I'm a quilter, but for my artist dates, I go on photo safaris. I pick a place, museums, walk in a local park, every stop along a subway. Oh my gosh, this is a cool idea. And challenge myself to take a certain number of photos at something, like 20 paintings that have an interesting color combination, 30 textures in tree bark or flowers, 20 interesting architecture forms. This may not immediately inspire something in my art. It may take years while it marinates. I love that, marinates. But it eventually comes back out in my work in some form. Just keep pouring in. That's amazing. And then um, Tina's saying that sounds like Julia Cameron's The Artist Way. I don't know what that is, but that sounds really cool. Uh, Christy, it sounds like you have a really good... I like the idea that you're saying that you go on artist dates. Maybe that's something I need to explore a little bit more. Go on dates and seek out this inspiration. I don't think that's really what I did yesterday when I quit on my flowers to go take a walk with my dog. But I like that you're intentionally going to do something, like you're, you're, you're going on a date with the practice of making art. Because that's, that's a whole, that's so cool. You're giving, your spells, you're giving yourself space to think through the things that you need to think through, think through the challenges, or just say, nope, I'm not even going to think through it. I'm just going to go and do. And that's hopefully what some of this is about too, is to give yourself space to create and to make something that you'll never use or maybe that you'll turn into something that's a little bit more simple and silly like a thank you card or a gift note. Um, but I hope this hour has been something that has inspired you. I hope that you walk away feeling like you have the tools and the ideas and the excitement to pour back into yourself that you've evaluated some of the things that you've evaluated that you needed to evaluate or you've pushed to the wayside the things that don't matter and i hope that something that we have chimed in on today or something that i have said has inspired you to just keep making to keep going to try something new to repurpose an old material or refurbish an old craft or make something new that was old something along those lines so thank you for joining us I am so glad you spent the hour with us and I really hope that you walk away feeling inspired and excited to move on to the next chapter of your making. Thank you. Good to see you.